Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this card with these Sizzix Shaker panes and their corresponding framelits. Um, this is a cool little set. It comes in a heart, in a square, and in a circle. And today's video, I'll be using the medium sized circle one with its corresponding frame. And these all came from Scrappy Shack. Scrappy Shack is a great little store with all kinds of everything you need, pretty much. So without further ado, let's go get into it. Okay, so we're going to make a five and a half by five and a half inch square card today. So I have a square card base and then an extra piece of five and a half by just a little under five and a half. And I'm going to be using the, um, excuse me, the large size circle here. And so I'm taking the inner portion of that circle and I'm going to cut out a hole in this card base all the way through. Now I use my precision plate so it does cut all the way through. Um, if you haven't tried the precision plate, it's, it's great for real detailed cutting or getting something all the way through like this. So I've got the hole in the center of my card and now I need another hole in another piece because I'm going to put acetate between the two so that the cards completely see through. So all I'm doing is I'm placing the uh, paper in there and just taking my pencil, putting a little die down and just drawing around the outside of, or actually the inside of the die. So I have a guide of where to put my die to cut that part out as well. And so I'm just gonna tape that down so it doesn't move on me and cut it out. All right, so we've got this cut out. Let's get our little excess mint tape off of here. There we go. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a piece of acetate. I'm going to make sure that I've got it in the right spot, right? I want everything to be all nice and even. And I'm going to take a piece of, uh, first I'm going to take some, uh, yeah, I'm going to take a piece of acetate and just kind of measure and just make a little pencil mark where I need to cut that out. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be sandwiched in between the other uh, piece of uh, paper. That just helps keep it sturdy at the back. You could just leave the hole if you wanted to. And I'm just using some permanent tape runner just to lay around the circle there so I have, you know, my acetate stays steady. And then I'll make sure that I've got my second piece in the right orientation and then go ahead and just tape that piece down as well. And run out of tape. <laughs> Good thing I keep spares. There we go. You could use glue if you wanted. You just need to be careful around the window portion. Or you could use double-sided tape. So get that stuck down. Want to make sure that it's nice and even now. I'm Just to let you know, I'm standing up when I'm doing this so that I can look straight down at it. And go for it yeah there we go <laughs> now we've got our nice sturdy piece and next we'll get to work on our uh, shaker pane so i'll be using this tim holtz butterfly and hit, uh, i'll be cutting them out because i have the corresponding dies and i want to just kind of quickly show you i'm painting this with lunar paste so you notice I leave the butterflies in their little um, in their little cubby hole where I cut them out from because it serves as a good guide of where to put my stamp. And I've left my stamp on the platform and I'm painting them on the platform. So I'll paint those the rest off camera and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. So you see I've lost a lot of the detail in the butterfly there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my archival ink and I'm going to stamp the detail right back in. And this lunar paste is really, really shiny. You can pick up lunar paste at Scrappy Shack as well as the shaker panes and the framelits and multiple other really cool stuff from Sizzix as well as lots of other companies as well. So um, what I do is I take the next butterfly out. I put them in that hole so I don't have to move my stamp at all. And then just go ahead and stamp it down a couple of times with archival. And I'm making two because my card's see-through and I don't want you to be able to see the tape on the back of my butterfly. So I'm making one and, and a matching one on the other side. 
and you'll see when we get there. You don't have to do this. You could, you know, you could find another way, but it's the best way to hide any tape. So I've got my two butterflies. Now I'm going to get out my shaker paint. These are about an eighth of an inch thick and they come with a plastic piece and they have tape on both sides of them. So I'm going to uh, put some, this, uh, this is some scrapbook.com tape, I think. It's eighth of an inch. It's really, really tiny, but it's really, really mighty. <laughs> so I'm going to lay this tape down on here and I'm going to just pull the backing off and tape it down to my shaker pane on the top. Now, I, I did some lamenting deciding whether I wanted to put it inside or outside, but ultimately I decided I wanted it on the outside because I didn't want anything to impede my little, um, my little sequence that I'm putting in or my little confetti. So we'll get him stuck down. This just couldn't be easy, y'all, and it's so much fun. And in the end, I'll show you a couple of other examples of things I'd done with these shaker panes and their corresponding dies. So I'm going to choose gold, I think. Yeah, there they are. I'm going to choose mostly gold for this. The, I, I, these are my go-tos. Um, and I forget where I bought these. I, I tend to buy stuff and take it out of his package and put it in my own packaging for convenience. So I'm going to do some gold, and I think I'm going to do some kind of... These ones are sort of translucent, I guess holographic. I'm just going to throw a couple of those in there. And <laughs> I'm lifting it up to see how many are inside and I decide I'm going to need some more gold ones. It's going to need, you can put a lot in these and because of the way they seal, you could put glitter in them. I don't know about liquids. I was thinking about liquids, but I think that I don't want to risk that. <laughs> I think I would feel like I'd have to seal it better. So the, the plastic piece that comes with it has two sides and well, has one side, but it's got a plastic coating on each side to protect it so it doesn't get dirty. Um, so you take the plastic off and then I'm just gonna stand up and lay this down over and commit and give it a push. And then I'll have to peel the uh, plastic off the other side and see how I'm going to put my butterfly right here. And I had already peeled off the plastic, so you didn't have to see me peel off plastic twice. <laughs> so I'm going to tape this butterfly down the same exact way that I taped the first one down. And you noticed I still have tape on one side. Now that tape is what's going to stick down to my card. And this fits over the hole that was made by the frame lip. So that there's just a little bit of space inside. So it, it just takes all the pain out of any kind of measuring when you're doing a shaker. And lamenting over whether it's going to seal. And when you're using tape this tiny, <laughs> sometimes it wants to come off right along with the backer. So you want to kind of burnish it. And so that's what you see me doing here is just kind of using my tweezers to burnish it so that the tape will stick. And these little uh, Sizzix tweezers are great for picking that off because they're really, really pointy. And I want to be careful, don't get that sequin stuck. <laughs> Then I'm going to take my tweezers, I'm going to hold it, I'm going to stand up so that I get it evenly down there so that it matches up with the other side. And there we have our shaker element. Super easy. Now I'm just going to remove the tape. Grab my card. I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to look through and see that all the side edges are basically even. So you see there's about oh, probably an eighth of an inch lip inside of there that holds that down. Now we're going to take the large ring that comes with the framelit. So it comes with the small ring to cut out and the large ring to cut a frame. So I'm going to cut two frames out of some gold Tim Holtz cardstock. And I'll put one frame on the outside and one frame on the inside. So that's the Ideology Gold, that, the, that comes with the gold and black set. So I've got them cut out. 
And for the first one, I'm going to take my skinny, skinny uh, tape again, and I'm going to tape all around, just kind of bending the tape as I go and pushing down. Um, so you could use glue, but anytime you try to use glue on plastic, um, there's a good chance that it's going to run and get into your main picture or, you know, the part that you see through. So I find that tape works best for this. If you don't have tape, use glue. It's not a big deal. Just be careful with it. Um, make sure you put a really, really thin line and, um, you know, get rid of any ooze that might be stuck on it. And I'll show you how I do that on the inside of the card because I'm, I'm gluing the other frame into the into the onto the card itself so you once you've got that down it's all wrinkly so you're going to want to burnish to make sure that all the sticky gets down onto your piece so i'm just burning burnishing it all the way around with my bone folder and that way i can ensure it's good and stuck down i'm going to try and grab the end there it's really tiny it's hard to see <laughs> at least for these old eyes but satisfying to pull off. Now I'm gonna stand up again. And, oops, don't drop that. <laughs> you don't want it to stick where you don't want it stuck. There we go, we'll get that stuck down. And so there's the inside, and I contemplate putting it there, but I decide ultimately to put it on the other side. So for this one, I'm just gonna use my glue. And I have my, um, I use reptile adhesive, and I have it in a little, glue bottle that I bought from Amazon and I'm just putting a thin line of glue all the way around and then what I do is I take and tap it off on something so there's no excess and then get that something out of my way and then I'm going to stand up and I'm going to glue this over the little porthole that goes through the back So a card that looks really complicated was just easy as could be. Then I'm gonna use a pre-made sentiment from one of Tim Holtz's um, sentiment sticker books that um, they're gold and black. And kind of decide where I'm gonna put that and commit and stick it down. So now when you open it up, you're gonna see that white on the back side. So what I ultimately decide to do is take another sticker and put it on the back side. Um, but isn't this cool? Like totally cool. I would love to get a card like this. So initially I put the sticker right way up, um, but I decided later that that didn't look right because when you open the card, it's upside down. So I flipped it over, but you don't you don't see me do that. This is mainly just so you can see that you know once you've laid everything down, all the all the white parts are covered. And you could use a regular sentiment, um, the sentiment strips that you cut out, or word dies that you cut out, whatever, whatever. You know, it's your card. Anyway, here we go, and here's some still pictures. And I'll also show you a still picture of some other stuff that I've done.